sorry I didn't have a chance to get paper copies. Um, you have one? Okay, good. So, I, ha I have it up in front of me. Um, Jameson, thank you for sending along the minutes. Last week. Um, so I would entertain a motion about the minutes. I'm going to make a motion to approve. Second. Any discussion on the minutes? Motion to approve the minutes as written. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Excellent. Thank you, Jameson. Um, so I wanted to give an update on the cost sharing for the senior housing. Um, and maybe Molly is actually the better person to speak to this since I was gone last week and don't have any additional updates. But just, uh, just to give you some background, um, remember when we were discussing the timeline and the fact that um, if we were to delay building the library until after the senior center was all built, that would represent sort of years lost, um, at least a year, and um, the cost that that would um, mean to the library project in terms of escalation. Um, so at the time we were having these conversations, um, the library trustees said, well, you know, we would be happy to help defray some of the costs if you move the seniors elsewhere. So. Um, so again, sort of going into the Wayback Machine, when the select board decided that they did want to move forward with this sort of more um, aggressive timeline and find space for folks that work in the current hooker uh, so that the library project could begin um, closer to when the senior project could begin, um, one of the things they did is start looking for a place for the seniors to go. And most fully Redeemer was willing, available, great space for the seniors, um, and so, they, they gave the town a lease agreement, um, and the trustees did vote to uh, basically pay the balance of what the town had already allocated towards the seniors. Um, and so this would come out of the town part of the library allocation. We can't pay for it out of the MBLC funds, um, but it's just a different town line going to another town line, really. Um, but I know that there have been some discussions of, about the lease that I'm, I've just gotten back from the vacation, so I, I'm not privy to any additional things that happen or any additions you have to what I um, Yeah, I mean, there really isn't an awful lot that's, that's happened. I think that, you know, in a nutshell, um, it, as Allison pointed out, and I, I'm sorry, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but the, the cost sharing, if you will, was basically. Um, our, our uh, group initially suggesting for the accelerated timeline that the um, incremental cost, it's not the full cost, but the incremental cost to the town um, would um, be borne by the, from the library project funds because the, you know, again, the, the cost benefit was clearly in the um, library building project's favor to move forward with that. So basically, just from a mechanical standpoint, um, what David Nixon and, and folks at Town Hall worked on was figuring out, okay, you know, what? let's play what if. So if we didn't go forward with the timeline, you know, what would be the budget that we would have to vote at town meeting floor to keep the hooker school heated and that kind of thing. Um, so those costs were calculated and then subtracted from the rental arrangement that, that was agreed to with um, the Diocese of Springfield for the use of the Most Holy Redeemer Parish. So that's what the library trustees voted to, was it 40,000? Somewhere around 40,000. 40, and it's it's in monthly installments. Um, I mean, not that this matters, but I'll just, you know, and it's gonna be higher monthly for the rest of this fiscal year because there's basically no money left in the senior funds for this fiscal year because uh, they use the rest of their funds to move them over there. Um, and so then the money will go down in our monthly. So um, we should talk about, Mark, how do we report this to the MBLC? Okay. Um, how, do, you know, how do we sort of price this out? Because it's really just going to be a line item transfer from one mm -hmm. town fund to another. So that's just a mechanical thing. Um, but in the end, we're saving ourselves a lot of money. So we had estimated it might cost, you know, upwards to three hundred thousand dollars having a delay of this magnitude. Right. So, um, so it's still, a, a, you know, a good cost savings. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and then, you know, just to touch on, too, you know, there was some concern expressed about how, how vigorously uh, the town negotiated with the diocese about the dollar amount. So um, there was some subsequent conversation after that was brought up at the select board meeting. Um, I think at this point, um, the, I think that, and again, we haven't, we have to be careful because they haven't, Select board really talked about it, but I mean, there was definitely um, some conversation with David Nixon because he's the one who did the negotiation and wanted to go back and find out, okay, exactly what was involved, what were the conversations that you had, what were, you know, what was the back and forth. I think at this point, um, we're generally satisfied that the price that was agreed upon is um, a very good price for the, for the town. Um, given the uniqueness of the property and given the fact that, you know, if, if you want to play, uh, you know, go back and forth negotiating with Colebrook, Colebrook had made it clear at the time, you know, we think we're making a, an incredibly generous offer, but, you know, if you want us to push the pencil, does anybody even say that anymore, push a pencil, but whatever, <laughs> sharpen the pencil, you know, on it, um, there's going to be a time delay. So, you know, in David Nixon's mind, if it took three more weeks to try to get the rental agreement down, uh, given the fact that the total agreement was at $60,000, I think, for annually for the rent, something in that neighborhood, 60 to 70. Um, if we have to go back through the diocesan process of approvals and it's three weeks, and we're saying every week that goes by is $7,000, unless you save over $21,000 on that contract, the numbers don't even work anyway. So that was the position that David took, and I think that generally we've accepted that as Sure, Colbrook may have said, oh, well, maybe we can do a little bit better on it. So maybe there's some opportunity to try to negotiate on the, on the back end of the contract if we start extending. But at this point, I think we're comfortable with most important is keep it moving, get everybody in there. Um, and again, it's a very unique property. We didn't really have a plan B. So. Any questions or comments about that? And then the only other thing I'll just point out too is, you know, to the extent there were any concerns about, um, you know, what side of the fence people were playing on. There's several of us in this room who are parishioners at Most Holy Redeemer. There are many of us in the room who are not parishioners at Most Holy Redeemer. Um, we're all taxpayers and residents of the town. And uh, we kept that all clean. The negotiations took place between David Nixon and Colebrook Realty and the diocese. It had nothing to do with any local parishioners at all, so, because I think some people were worried about that. And all of this was on the various select board meetings, so if you got to watch at home or you want to watch on Hadley Media, um, we could find those times if anyone is interested in saying, hey, I really want to see this for myself, I'll go through and find out what it was. <laughs> and in the spirit of making sure that you get it from all sides, um, I happened to, the night we took the vote, it was 4-0-1, um, because I abstained, um, because I sit on the Parish Finance Council, so I didn't want there to be any appearance of a conflict. And we had an event over at the church like a week later, and people were coming going, how dare you vote no on that? I'm like, I didn't vote no, I abstained. <laughs> so, you can't win for losing and happy. <laughs> Do you guys mind if I just give you a quick update yeah. on the senior? Because um, just to let you know, the senior center project is moving along quickly right now. We just got our general contractor bids in and are voting tomorrow night on the select board to choose a contractor. Um, it did come in under budget for nice. us, which is really good and sh should hopefully reflect well for you guys yeah. too. Um, and that's moving forward. So we're really hoping that you know, we're going to break ground as soon as possible, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know if it'll be March, but hopefully into April. And yeah. uh, it seems like we're all on track to renovating town hall, mm -hmm. getting the most Holy Redeemer prepped for the seniors to move over there. So we should be all on schedule too with the demolition of the hooker school, you know. And if you see, um, Gary Berg and folks yeah. at town hall, uh, Again, Chris Okafer, the DPW director, they've been doing a wonderful job coordinating yeah. and getting that all moving. So um, 
it's nice to see people working so closely together. Yeah, and, and Suzanne's been working well with them too, trying yeah. to get everything coordinated and get everything moving. So it's it's great. We've had a lot of great momentum getting all that moving. Good. Good. Um, and the only issue I was going to bring up from the senior side in relation to the library, it seems like one issue we should get together and meet about at some point, doesn't have to be right away, is the sign in front. Yeah. That's right. going to be the sign for both the library right. and the senior yep. center. Uh, yeah. And what that will right. Right. look and like, what, what our limitations or, are yeah. because of yeah. the sign restrictions and Hadley. Yeah. If you guys want to use the sign that's out front here now or what. So yeah. I don't know if at some point you guys want to have a co-meeting to discuss Based that. Yeah. Or, both design teams yeah. told the planning board, Yep. We're going to do something together. We're yep. working on it. We'll get back to you. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. So we need to. And yeah. There have been some rough drawings, sketches going back and forth, but we haven't settled on anything yet. And yeah. yeah, the only only reason I would say maybe do it sooner rather than later is just that we have to, the seniors have to decide on a sign for the senior center. On so your building. On the, the building one that itself. They showed on the building is not the one you're going with? Well, it's going to be on the building oh, okay. itself, it's not on oh, the okay. ground. Okay. Um, and sooner or later we'll have to finalize the font yeah. and all that kind of detail. Yeah, yeah. So if we could yeah. match it, that might be good. Yeah. But if not, then we'll okay. just do it. But just yeah, we'll figure out, out who's there. around like for a day. I knew you guys have your meetings in the daytime. And so we'll get, up yeah, we could, we can schedule something yeah. afternoons too, or whatever, you know, yeah. or maybe before a select board meeting one time. So Patrick, when you guys were having your regular scheduled meetings are you having those anymore when it was you and Joanne yeah we haven't had one okay. in a while okay. probably well it's been it's been a few months okay. since but that could be a good group to maybe reconstitute <clears throat> mm -hmm. sure okay. so maybe we'll think about that and then they can bring it back to the larger groups and say hey this is what we've come up with what yeah do you think? So, okay. I think it's just something we can work together okay. on and yeah come to some kind of conclusion yeah I brought the sketch that I did so those so far on the photographs yeah. okay. of the existing yeah. signs. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. interested in seeing those. Tonight. Great. Can you speak to how many construction companies bid? Ten, con Ten bids. contractors yeah. wow, bid. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, we had a lot of bids. The low was, I would say, lower than everybody. And then we had about four contractors that were really tight in price. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of went up from there. Mm -hmm. So. I mean, people bid it competitively, and the people that were, looks like we're going to go with are, they built the Westfield Senior Center as well and have a lot of municipal experience. So it's called Forish Construction. Forish. Out of Westfield. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're out of Westfield. So um, Yeah, so they, they got 10 bids, and those are exactly, those are the same contractors that have been bidding on the library, the same, roughly same yep. size projects, yep. so forth. So 10 bids is an incredible amount of bids, and two through five were, were jammed yeah. on top, like two. Within like a hundred dollar project, yeah. you know, two to three was less than ten thousand yeah. dollars. Three to wow. four was twelve thousand. So they were jammed, and then force was was a little bit beneath that. They, so, they wanted, yeah. yeah, yeah. So they were they. they right. So the real number. price is probably this two price. Five is yeah, the that's the, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, but we, you know, uh, our OPMs and everything really yeah. vetted. I mean, no, force <laughs> yeah. is they they went back and forth and made yeah. sure the price was what they were going with, and we got a lot of good feedback from people in Westfield that, you know, they had minimal change orders and that kind of stuff. I mean, reasonable things, but weren't trying to work the system, you know, so. Great. So. They, for what it's worth, they did two buildings for us. Yeah. And I think they did just fine. Yeah. And I thought the two that they did, one was a brand new building and the other one was a historic renovation and restoration. Oh, I think wow. they did a better job on the new building. <coughs> that's probably good for you. Mm -hmm. That was yeah. good for us. Yeah. And that's yeah. really important feedback. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. How likely are they to bid for the library project? I would say 100%. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, yeah, because we kind of wanted to project that we were bidding time, both right. projects back to back and you'd be advantageous to bid strongly on the yes. both, you know, so. Yeah. So for both nice. that general contractor, all the people that bid, but especially Forge, who's low, and then the, the low filed subcontractors, electrical, plumbing, mechanical, it makes all the sense in the world if they're low in the senior center to, to go aggressively uh, at the library, so they get two projects on one yeah. site. So. Mm -hmm. Great, good news. Yeah. Uh, so why don't we just skip ahead to the change order since you brought it up anyway, and this way I can even cede the floor to others um, for a while. So, um, so la at the last meeting we talked about the change orders, and Mark, you had given us mm -hmm. your sort of um, 
uh, opinion that anything between five to ten thousand dollars, we might just want to sort of not bring all the way back to, right. to handle more quickly. Um, and we had talked about appointing, um, you know, a sort of subcommittee to approve changes. I'm going to actually take that one off the, the table for tonight just because Alan isn't here. Um, Alan is on vacation and I know he had been interested in um, serving on that. So it, it, unless anybody has to get this out, we're not going to have any change orders yeah. before our next meeting. So I would just like to table that part of the conversation just so Alan can be here as part of the conversation. Um, but the select board had this conversation as a larger conversation agreeing that they wanted, um, so the, the current, I don't know, laws on the book, but the current agreement was any change orders for any construction in town had to be approved by the select board. So that was what was sort of on the book. So uh, we had a sort of two week running discussion about this at the select board. Um, and it was initially brought by the seniors because they're further along. So this would apply to the seniors, ourselves, and the fire substation. Um, of having a desire to have somebody sort of on site to be able to approve these change orders. So I'll spare you all the conversation and just to say that um, everybody reached an agreement that I think everybody was really happy with, which is that any change orders um, up to $10,000 were okay for the whatever project subcommittee, whatever you're calling it, a finance committee, whatever you're calling it, um, could approve uh, up between select board meetings and then those change orders would then have to sort of be presented at the select board so for us for the library it would sort of have to go to the trustees first and then go to the select board which is just another additional wrinkle but we basically have um you know if you will at worst case scenario a sort of weekly limit of ten thousand dollars because in theory the select board could be meeting every single week and as long as you don't exceed that ten thousand dollars between select board meetings you should be good um, so we, everybody walked away, I think, really happy about it. Um, I think also hoping that we're not up to this 10,000, you know, but maybe once or twice in our entire right. project that we're going to be talking about kind of hundred dollar changes here and there, you know, about hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, like super low stuff, yes, like you've right. just got to swap this out. I've got to run to right. Home Depot and get this because th this thing we bid for is unavailable or whatever, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, I think I think that was that's, good. That's, so yeah, yeah. So we've got that. I think that'll keep all the projects moving forward. Um, and I'm just going to bring this uh, other line item back uh, for the next time. So it's good for everybody to think about: Is this something you want to be a part of? If you're you really the number one criteria is you need to be around during the day because the construction is going to be here during the day. So if you know you're not available during the day. Um, you know, don't sign up to do this. And we're obviously going to need more than one person. Um, you know, Patrick is going to be right here next door, so he's sort of the likely suspect. I know Alan was interested, but I don't want to commit him without, and right. I forgot to check in with him before he left. And typically what would happen is, is a proposal will be submitted for something, a mm -hmm. change, reviewed by us and Phil. If either of us think there's an issue with just the dollar amount versus the scope, it'll be kicked back for revisions mm -hmm. and then it'll come back again with a, with a number that we're happy with and then if we think it's if it's worthy we'll make a recommendation both to Alan or to the person mm -hmm. or, you know through the subcommittee so whoever's representing the town won't be left on an island to make those decisions it'll be reviewed and approved yep. prior to that so. Mm -hmm. great so we'll just I'll just bring that to our next agenda yep. um, and we'll we'll discuss it this way we can have two or three people who kind of know they're yep. sort of supposed to be standing at the right. Okay. Yeah. I, just to give you feedback, how we're doing things on the senior center project is we're going to have weekly construction mm -hmm. meetings mm -hmm. and then monthly finance mm -hmm. subcommittee meetings, so to speak, to do the process, those change orders and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. I don't know. Just to okay, great. let you know how that's it's working over there. Yeah, and yeah. I know that Alan had talked with me about, you know, having a regularly set time yeah. where, you know, every week. Like noon on Friday. Yeah, we well, you yeah. check in yeah. where you do a check in and say, is there anything you anticipate us having to do or think about next week? You know, just that kind of thing. So sort of a similar model. Right? Yeah, yeah. A regular meeting. Yeah, because I think if there are like big change orders or something on the radar, we could schedule a select board meeting. I think we're all on right. board yeah. with that, yeah. trying to process those. Mm -hmm. so. Right, and the yeah. trustees were in agreement that if we needed to have a quick trustee meeting just to okay stuff, that would be fine too. So. Okay. Great. 
slow suggestion and not mm-hmm. do the change order, orders. Yeah. So there's the financial side, mm-hmm. there's the, the design yep. side as yep. well. So I think it would be good to develop strategies for both. Mm-hmm. And it yeah. might be the same people who are reviewing or different p- people, but it's important to consider design aspects of uh, change orders as well. Yeah, design and that's a good financial. point. That's why it's good to have more than one person that's sort of looking at it over because, you know, I might be going in there thinking, well, if it's only, you know, this amount of money and we still have the money in the budget, I'm okay with it. And I might forget exactly, as you say, to say, well, maybe we didn't really want that linoleum. <laughs> um, you know, yeah. So I think that's why it'd be great to have, you know, sort of three people available um, to sort of review things and, and just remind each other that we are sort of overseeing all of that. So thank you for reminding us. So I will turn it over to you, Mark and Phil. I guess you wanted to show us, to, were you showing us that new option three or just all of our documents? This is the 75% okay. set that we have. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to do that first? Do you want us to look at the updated cost estimates? Cost estimates next time. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay, that's fine. I thought it was this time. No cost for you. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, Great. Uh, so we... let's look at the design then. That's okay. more fun anyway. Do you want to hit anything else uh, before we get to that? Because uh, this will be, uh, this is the page turner. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. may, this may sure. take a lot. Yeah. We can share. Sure. You want There's to talk? a number of members yeah. of the sustainability mm-hmm. yeah. subcommittee here. Um, it's important as we go through all this, and Phil, this is directed uh, toward you, um, just having an eye towards sustainable materials throughout. So as you're sharing and, and bringing us aware um, with the documents, just add that. Um, there was a suggestion to a uh, building energy management panel. I don't know if that's something. Uh, we will have a building energy management system. And the, but the, is, I, I guess I'm. There are some public it. schools, I think of, um, is this a display that you could see? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Like yeah. yeah, especially yeah, especially yeah. when we have a PV system, we typically would specify that so you could see that information. And it would be in a public it would location. Be in a public yeah. place. Yeah. It typically would happen on a flat screen. Mm-hmm. We'd yeah. do it somewhere Absolutely. near the front desk in case yes. anybody had a question. And then that system is also available if you are interested. Um, if you decide that you want to, you can assign an IP address to the computer that's mm-hmm. connected to that. Mm-hmm. And then anybody with that IP address and a password, if you want a password to it, can log into it. Mm-hmm. And so they, you, know, you can do school programs where they might make an estimate mm-hmm. about what the difference is between a cloudy day and a sunny day. Uh, and then they can do the science, and then they can log in and check, check it against yeah. what's actually happening, because there's a weather station that's associated mm-hmm. with it as well. It'll be up on the roof, and all that information is is on that screen, and is also uh, accessible to the outside world if you assign an IP address. To, but you need to have an, ad- an address. Mm-hmm. And does it sort of archive all the data, so you can sort of take a look at? I, I don't know the answer to that. Mm-hmm. Um, you can oh, set well, it up. well, yeah. yes, it, it will track, so that you can go back and look in the past. Mm-hmm. If you're doing a, uh, we want to see what it, what the difference is between January mm-hmm. and July. You can go back and look mm-hmm. at that information, okay. so it's uh, saving it and it's serving, yeah. saving it locally. Mm-hmm. But how exactly it saves mm-hmm. it, and how much of the data, oh, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's just the mm-hmm. kind of uh, simple points, I don't really mm-hmm. know. My su- my suggestion would be the first six months or so of the operation of the building, not to make that data public because there's like the commissioning process. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Buildings are being commissioned and basically fitting in to yeah. the yeah. operation, and then yeah. numbers can go all over the right, place. Right, right. So that can be maybe. I don't know, archived locally, yeah. but not available publicly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And later on, when you're sharing, we'll be asking you about the fa- um, phase change materials. Yes, we haven't. Uh, I don't have specifications with me tonight, so I can't give you that information. I can point out where they may go inside the building as I move through. That'll be the question that'll come up. Uh, and for the record, uh, the sustainability subcommittee, we met for a half hour before this meeting. We reviewed the things that we originally had brainstormed about a year ago. I think that meeting was last May. Um, and many of those ideas have been integrated into the design. And that's mm-hmm. all that we could have hoped for. And then stressing that um, going out um, in the future, again, integrating as many sustainable materials into the actual construction. And we will keep doing research around um, the EV charging station. That's something that we can seek more information out. Christian earlier had shared a little bit about the PV bike share program and possibly having a, a charging station in front. 
it would make sense to have this as a, a location. But that's something that covers both the library and the whole community. But you may want to do a charger, a vehicle charger. We may want to do a vehicle charger. Okay. Yeah. Which you can buy, but I probably need to. I need to run the conduit out right. to the yeah. and label the parking space. Yeah, I I had done some research on it early on, and I know that EverSource has some sort of grants that they give towards um, sustainable projects, and they had a whole list of them at the time, and a couple of. Uh, municipalities had used that money for charging stations, not necessarily a library. Yeah. I, I did do some research on that. I'll I mean, try to dig that up. Yeah, yeah you're going to want to decide whether or not you want a level one or a level two charging station as well, because there's cost difference between those two units. And what you're going to get out of it, you know, a regular visit to the to the library mm -hmm. may give you four minutes of drive time on a level one, where it may give you 20 minutes or or half an hour of drive time on, yeah. on a level two. And yeah, two is faster. Yes. Right, level, yeah. two. level three are the superchargers. Like yeah. The Tesla things they have. Those are like those things that they have at yeah. Pride, right? Yeah. right? Yeah. The threes, yeah. 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 And again, we will keep giving you information on what we discover about the PV bike share program. That there would be some sort of small concrete pad, but wiring off one of the light poles, something like that, it would make sense when we have everything dug up. We, we, we want to get a conduit in the ground, right? right. Yeah. And a conduit in the ground is a change order. Uh, is just as good as a conduit in the ground. That's not a change order, but it's a lot easier to put right. in now. Mm -hmm. uh, and after the floor slab goes in, it starts to get expensive. Right. expensive. Yeah. So if you think you, if you're trending 60% right now that you want a charging station or the PV bike, yeah, put in an empty conduit now. Even if you don't use it, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. far less money now than later. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. And do you have any um, better sense of what the select board is thinking about when it comes to the PV bike share? You know, in likelihood, I guess he signed on to a grant. Right. I mean, it's it's going to come down to money, Cost. like everything yeah. else. You know, mm -hmm. um, I bet I think certainly morally we're very much in favor of the, the bike sharing program, um, but a lot of work would have to be done to get the support from area businesses or, or private enterprises to help fund this. Yeah, I was surprised at how much sort of upfront commitment they require, yeah. Yeah. Um, and not yeah. just make us a pad and give us the electricity to charge this, but sort of the basically like an endowment for it, yeah. right? Um, yeah. Really and yeah, it needs to be a lot. sustainability yeah. program. Yeah, a significant endowment in over the first three yeah. years. It would be a $36,000 commitment. So I'm going to bring up Alan's um, points that he had asked me to bring up because I think they fit under the umbrella of sustainability, um, and they're really about the hooker. Um, and I know that you guys had exchanged some emails with him as well about this. So three things that he mentioned um, were the plaque um, that's currently at the hooker. He wants to make sure that that is sort of, you know, uh, brought out of that building and put in the library somewhere. So really, this just is removal of it. Mm -hmm. um, and the question was, can someone in town do that before we demolish? Or um, do we need to put in wording in the, in the bid documents about that? Um, and I know he was going to have some conversations. I don't know where that's gone. Um, also, some of the bricks. Um, I think he said like 100 or something. It's not a huge number of bricks. He wanted to make sure that those were um, salvaged, so that would go into the same category. And the third thing he mentioned was one of the crab apple trees that's out in front of the building, whether or not that could be saved and reused on our new property. Um, and Phil, you had reached out to your landscape architect who basically assessed it and said, this tree is close to the end of its life anyway, and it would be better not to, not to do this. Pulling a tree like that out of the ground and then trying to save it and move yeah. it somewhere is may kill it anyway, yeah. and given the age and size of the tree right now, yeah. um, she wasn't feeling too good about yeah. it. And I think Alan was okay with that one, but mm -hmm. I haven't had a chance to, to touch base with him again about that. But. Are, you, are folks attached to those crab apple trees? Because maybe this will, well, I know there may be ways to salvage yeah. the wood yeah. and, yeah. you know, make cribbage yeah. boards yeah. Yeah. or something. I don't, I don't know. People have done all kinds of things. Yeah. yeah I, it's the first I've heard about the, the crab apple yeah. tree, so, I mean, I always hate killing trees when you don't have to, but, have to, yeah. yeah. Given where they're located so close to this, the oh, yeah, where the new mm -hmm. building's gonna be, I, yeah. I, I would be worried about trying to salvage them and save the new place. Mm -hmm. 
So anyway, I just I, I told him that I'd bring that up. And so I'm sure we'll circle back before the bid documents are complete, just in case he checks with the town. They can't do the work on salvaging those things before demolition. So we need to put it in. Well, from, from my so. point of view, I don't know how you feel about it. You can pull that plaque out of there anytime you want. Right. Uh, right. That should be pretty easy. So right. you'll be able to do that yeah, sure the town with a that. screwdriver. Right. But, right. No. I don't want to commit Gary. He's busy, you know. But it, Alan said he was going to talk to him yeah. about okay. it. Yeah. But the bricks, yeah. we could probably get them to salvage the bricks for you. Yeah. Nobody's mm -hmm. going to clean them for you. I mean, you wouldn't want them to clean them for you. No, because you, you wouldn't want to pay them that prevailing wage to clean yeah. the brick. Right. Clean right. The brick. Right. right. But you might yeah. say, Neatly stack on a pallet, two hundred and fifty brick, and put it yeah. over there in the okay. corner, and you can take it from there. Yeah, because right, because mm -hmm. if you want a hundred, you probably should ask for two hundred fifty, because right. some of them get broken cleaning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, so that seems pretty simple. Yeah. All right. Great. Anything else that we need to discuss before we turn it over to Bill from the drawings? Uh, regarding sustainability, has an energy model been completed yet? Do you we know? We do what? have an energy model. Okay. What is the projected energy usage intensity? Uh, I don't know that number offhand. Okay. Maybe if you can look it we up can, and yeah, share. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get that. My engineers are maintaining that. Yeah, if you email it around, maybe you could give some context about it, you know, so that that could be a good talking point for us if, you know, if there's some sort of industry standards or mm -hmm. this is the top median, you know. That's cool. Yeah. There are kind of rules and exactly. regulations, what that, is the baseline. Yeah. And when, when you compare energy efficiency, always compare it to a baseline, so yeah. it would be good to know. I, um, yeah, I got to. Yeah. I have until March 31st to load up all our AIA okay. 2030 information anyway, so okay. <laughs> Great. I have to call and ask about all my energy models. Okay, good. Yeah, that would be good to, to have something, like, to be more knowledgeable about it mm -hmm. for all of us. And working off of that idea, does anybody in the room know, is there a 25 kWh system limit for municipal buildings? I had heard that number thrown out. I don't know that. Okay. You mean? No. Yeah. All right. Just on the scale and the size of the PV array. Okay. Yeah, no. Nothing I know of. All right. No. Yeah, they're certainly doing a bigger system than that in Irving. Yeah. Yep. All right. Great. All right. We'll turn it over to you. Right. We'll move our stuff here. And I'll move my in case they have any trouble. Uh, a list of the consultants working on it is a list of the drawings. Where we're at right now, the current date. Um, I will spend a little bit more time on some of these drawings than others, but basically each, I think I may have explained this before, the, each of the different trades, this is architecture that we're looking at here in the, in the front, um, typically has their own abbreviations and symbol sheet, and so if there's something you see on one of my drawings, which are labeled A drawings, with the exception of these two uh, G for general drawings, in the front, um, you could find that here. The civil drawings, I probably will not spend a lot of time on. I'm going to move through them pretty quickly because these are a little bit more advanced than what we had to submit to the planning board. And so that stuff hasn't really changed. Um, and, if, and and we're not going to change it, right? If we had to change anything here, we'd have to go back to the planning board. <laughs> so, 
So we've got some typical details here about how to put in a curb and how to take care of a slope and how to put down pavement, um, how to do uh, curb cuts and sidewalks and how to build curbs and how to put in signs, uh, the various signs. We won't have all of these on site, but we will certainly have some of them. Uh, the signs that we're specifying, stop signs and one-way signs and things like that, are just like the ones that the highway department uses. They're the same, it's the same standard, metal signs, posts and everything are the same. Um, some underground piping systems, how to bed them in sand and gravel and how to do thrust blocks and turn angles and all that other business that kind of goes along here. Some, again, typical details. Um, this is the... Uh, some site details for some additional underground drainage systems. I think these are probably water quality control systems that help to separate out the oils and have to sump down the bottom for the sand to fall out of the water to kind of clean the water up preliminarily before it goes out into the stormwater system. How to, how to build one of those, how to put in manholes. These are the details for your underground um, Water storage and reinfiltration systems. There's two different types. There's the larger one with the pipes that's under the parking lot, and then there's a smaller one you'll recall. I can point them out in the front. Um, it's in the grass area. Um, they basically work the same way. We're storing water in them, um, and then they, it recharges into the ground. Um, and then there is an overflow. You can see that the pipes come in high on the system, and so there's a reservoir that hangs out down below, and that reservoir leaches the water down into the soil. And the pipe on the outlet side is high so that if you get over that point in a hundred year storm or something it can overflow to the stormwater system in the street. They all basically work the same way. Is the location of the library considered floodplain? No. No, the floodplain, you recall, we looked at floodplains mm -hmm. over okay. at, at That would have been the, build, the, the space in between the Russell and the Hun Hopkins. And a lot of their fields are mm -hmm. in the floodplain yeah, as well, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. and you, it's, you could do it, it's just hard and it gets more expensive mm -hmm. to do it. Um, site demolition plan, this basically calls out to take down the building and so forth and there'll be hazardous materials. Uh, they have done their testing in the building, the HAZMAT folks, and we've, we've only got a preliminary report from them. We don't have a final report. Once I get that, I'll send it to you. But no surprises? Uh, no, I mean, we knew the building yeah. was kind of full of stuff. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. That's been confirmed. Yeah. But no, like, radiation hiding in the basement or anything. <laughs> I, that yeah. Yeah. I didn't see anything like that. Too. <laughs> there was some fairly new drainage put in around the building, so I don't know if that would be helpful in the future in tying in or knowing where it is. Um, work towards, I think, towards that end. Down in this area? Yep. Um, I will, uh, I'll point that out to them. I think we did get actually drawings of that at some point yeah. that showed where that stuff was. I'll mention it to them. When the building comes down, things like the relatively new metal roof, or anything reclaimed, or is it just... Uh, the way the demolition works is, um, unless we say specifically that you want something back, like some of the bricks mm -hmm. or the plaque if the town doesn't take it down, uh, then the ownership of all the materials from the demolition become the property of the contractor, and they can do with it what they want. In most cases, my guess is they will dispose of it. Mm -hmm. But if you wanted somebody to spend the time to take off carefully the metal roofing and salvage it, you're, you're going to spend 50 grand. Right. 75 grand trying to get somebody to do that. To disassemble a building is really, really expensive versus taking just taking it down. We looked at, uh, in Dudley, we looked at the costs for disassembling the existing building that was there. It was an old town hall and police station that we took down um, after we determined that we couldn't reuse that structure. Um, and the cost of dismantling the building and salvaging the materials was four times the amount of what it would take to take a town. Uh, that was in 2008. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that numbers have changed, but I would guess that it's going to be on the order of the magnitude, some similar to that. So again, site uh, layout plan. This is basically um, where everything is and what the dimensions are for the kind of hardscape around the building, where the sidewalks are and the parking spaces, and how big they are, and how it kind of relates to the things around it. Um, this is the uh, underground, this is that large storage system with the round pipes, and then this is the, the kind of little Kwanzaa hut looking guys that are up in the front. These are the two different systems for recharging storm water on site. We've got some mechanical equipment back here, uh, a transformer. This is our kind of utility yard with the door that comes out of the, the door that comes
comes out of the mechanical room back here. Um, there's a sidewalk that comes up that serves the door that now comes out of the story crap slash pre-K room off of the side versus off of the end of the, the projection. Uh, so that essentially stays the same in terms of its relationship to the sidewalk. Um, and I don't think anything else has changed here. Connections to the utilities and the street. The pipe, everybody will remember, but we're bringing in a new water line that's going to come in off of Route 9. It's going to come in, serve the, the senior center, and then they're going to run it down to a certain point, which point we will pick it up and we will continue it, mm -hmm. and then connect back into the main out here, and we'll take our lines off of that as well. And I believe there's a sewer line that runs through here as well. Yes, there is that mark somewhere. I think they're both shown in here. It's closer to our building, right? It wasn't I don't a, know. They, they had the line yeah. drawn for a while. That goes all the way down the Legion. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's marked in here. Uh, the grading plan. Uh, this is where you would normally expect to see a lot of topo lines, but your property is really flat, so there's not a lot of lines, but there are a lot of spot grades um, to show how we're meeting the grades to meet the handicap code and making sure that the water pitches to the, to the drains and so forth, and you can see the drains show up on the, on the site where the manholes are to pick up the water. Site phasing plan. Um, the idea is, is that um, we're going to do this in two stages, and this has been worked out with the senior center so that we can provide access uh, in and out of the building. And so on the first stage, we'll come in on one side of the site, and then in the second stage, we'll come in on the other side of the site. And then I'll give um, our contractor and their contractor, uh, it's the same contractor, an opportunity to get in and out of the site uh, while we're working on the opposite side. So on that point, um, when I was in the library earlier today, a couple of the staff members or maybe a staff member and a volunteer had asked me about parking during the construction. Yeah. Where are people going to park during the construction? Um, so we, just, we should just remember to bring that up um, with the select board or municipal building committee. I, I, it's not your problem, Phil. It's a town problem. Um, I know that, that David Tudrin had put on the table the thought of doing something with the Russell School, so I don't know if... We haven't talked okay. about it, okay. but I mean, that's something that could be done. Right, it just, it reminded me, oh yeah, I remember yeah. I heard David had an idea, but I never knew what happened with that, so it just reminded me that I should follow up. A lot of uh, large construction sites park off-site somewhere, and then they'll, they'll bus them or truck them or yeah. van, whatever, back and forth. They were worried about where do library existing Goodwin oh. patrons and staff park during. When we're on this yeah. side of the site, when this side of the site is open, yeah. access to that will be exactly. easy. Exactly. That's when it, that yep. side is closed. That's right. Mm -hmm. So and that's what they were were starting to think about. Mm -hmm. um, so we just. So you're, you're saying that this driveway, even up just up to here, will be closed entirely. It will be one side or the other, and it will be complete. Mm -hmm. So just something okay. to get ahead of, yeah. so that everyone yeah. know, can know, people mm -hmm. can start anticipating during these dates, you're going to need to park at the Russell School or whatever the solution yeah. is. Just just wanted to bring that mm -hmm. up. Right now. Mm -hmm. Not to make it your problem, though. It's not. Uh, yeah. Your so. problems are my problems. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm just wondering if they will get to the point where... Maybe we can talk to the senior center design group and see if they're talking about because they've got to park their construction vehicles right. on site anyway, and right. they may be calling to put down the base out here. And maybe there's a way that they can reserve eight spots or six spots or whatever over here, and but you wouldn't want the public in here. Just say you, know, yeah, you don't could want do it for the, the public staff. So you could, like, we could maybe do two spots for the staff, and then mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I think it. Liability be is just yeah, yeah. not even. It's just mm -hmm. yeah. I, I don't think we're gonna the I don't think the problem will be the like staff. That. I mean, the staff yeah. can park elsewhere wherever we can find space. I think it's, it's more an issue of the public being able to access the building. That's mm -hmm. the tricky part here mm -hmm. because yeah. it's just How a real. How far away walk. is the Holy Redeemer? You could walk, but in nice yeah. weather you could walk. Yeah. 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 What about Hawkins mm -hmm. Academy using that parking lot and just walking? <clears throat> right, I mean, if it's, it's the summer, yes, or yeah, but during the day and it's. Pretty much crowded the day and evening. Mm -hmm. So my committee had talked about in front of Russell School mm -hmm. and getting a price yeah. to do that. I yeah. just don't know where that sits. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. So if you could just cost. bring it back to your committee, yeah. and I'll just remember to. But that would be a good short-term, term, term and long-term yeah. mm -hmm. solution because we need the parking. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Anyway, right so. for yeah. town hall for everything. Right. We just definitely need more parking yeah. right here in the center.
landscaping plan. This hasn't uh, this hasn't changed much. This is my working set in the office, um, so you may see some red marks here and there. Um, hopefully, you won't have to find anything that says, "What the heck does this mean?" <laughs> um, but you might. Um, this hasn't changed very much from what I showed you last time. Yeah, that's right. We we changed one of these trees to some lower bushes in here, and that's this is the most up to date. Um, it's also been updated to show the new entranceway in uh, exit door that comes out of storing crap. Is so, there any seating area? Uh, there is no the outdoor seating mm -hmm. um, on this site, on, on our part of the site. Um, you could certainly go out into this lawn area. Um, there are some decorative boulders. You could certainly sit on a rock. Mm -hmm. um, in the garden, but basically this is a this is a garden area. Um, we don't this this is lawn area and plantings out in this place. Uh, exterior seating areas are counted as floor space to what, that you need to provide parking for. So even if this was going to be five year olds, mm -hmm. need to have a place for their cars to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we didn't gain any more in the back part from our negotiation for the senior center and, and shift, you know, shift um, it, well, yeah, we did a little bit because the green it was, space got the green yeah space the green space it used to be 12 feet from the back of the building the sidewalk here and, and so we have almost uh, 18 um, 20 I mean it's a little bit bigger than a parking space yeah, there not so, a lot. yeah it's yeah. not a lot but we right. did pick up some and they were able to compress a little bit and when their building got smaller things slid back that way anyway the mm -hmm. kind of the whole parking arrangement slid back a little bit anyway so maybe the solution would be to provide more boulders. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah we, well, I mean, we're showing one, two, three, four, five, six, that seven works. boulders yeah. that you can sit on. I mean, so you know, and once we're boulders. in there, if someone happened to put out a bench, I mean, right? I mean, this is... Well, as long as the planning board was okay with it, it's okay with me. Well, a temporary? Yeah, it was no longer a plan. It's yeah. a fait yeah. yeah. mm -hmm. I'll bring your own lawn chair. Bring your own lawn chair. <laughs> Um, and how did you decide on the species? The we planting? asked um, if they could. Uh, well, we also we worked with these folks, and so the street trees match the ones that we come up with over here. We're looking for natives and things that don't need to be watered after they've been watered in, because okay. um, there's no irrigation system on here, yeah. um, and we don't want one. A temporary irrigation system, yes, uh, because you want to make sure that your plants take off um, and and get well rooted you will need to water in order to get things established. Um, it can take between a year to two years to get a lawn established. And if you don't do it, it'll die and blow away. Um, once you get it established, it'll take care of itself. But you really, really do need to water it, usually for more than a year to get it to, to take. Um, and in the end, is there any alignment between these plants and the senior center plants? Yes. Yeah, yes. that's what he was saying. Okay. So that's, that's so some of the foundation right. planting and bushes and this, these street trees match. So these parking lot trees are the same ones they're using right. out there. Look at GTs. You see that? The GTs are the locusts, the honey locusts. The honey locusts. Yeah, it was okay. a coordinated honey locust discussion trees. between the two camps. Oh, right. Yeah, so these honey did. locust trees are the ones that they're using in their parking lot, and so we have them basically, these larger trees, um, are the honey locust trees that they have out there. And then we've got a specimen tree, this CK right up in here, is a kusa dogwood, that was a request. Mm -hmm. We had some bushes in here, we put the kusa dogwood in. They have a kusa dogwood back on their front lawn yeah. as well, um, and I guess... And we have some out. There's some dogwoods out yeah. front you have over yeah. here, and that was one of the things that was... Asked in the bike rack shift from being in front of the library to on the side? Okay. Right near the door. It just makes it easier. Mm -hmm. um, if we put a bike rack here, the 13 year olds that come in are going to just pile them right in front over here. Yeah. Right? And, dump them anyway. and they'll just dump them. Mm -hmm. um, so if you don't make it convenient, they won't use this. Uh, this is our code plan thus far. Uh, in this white space right here, you will see the code review um, once that is put on the drawing. It's not yet, but basically this, what this does is it's kind of a one-stop shopping for the building department and for the contractors so they can kind of see what's going on uh, in terms of the code and some other kind of standard things that we have. Um, typical partition types of interior walls. Um, they're all labeled on the plan so you can kind of find out what they are. 
basically you can trace through here and find out um, how many occupants for each of the rooms and what the occupancy counts are and then how that cranks into how many total occupants are allowed in the building um, and what the square footage is and then what the plumbing calculations are for figuring out which is based on the occupancy count how many fixtures you need and that's all in here and then there'll be a code review that talks about the construction type and the ratings of the walls and so forth. We'll also label this with egress path distances and so forth because there's limits on how far you can go. Your building is small code-wise, mm -hmm. so, you know, points in the code will say you can't travel more than 250 feet before you get to an exit. Well, you'll, you'll be high-pressed to travel more than 50 feet to get to an exit in this building. So. Oh, yeah. Is this sprinkler? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. No problem. Floor plan, that hasn't really changed very much. Um, we're showing the stone flooring in the lobby here. The tiles are in the toilets. The stone flooring is going to be one of the things that we're going to suggest as an alternate. We have some suggestions for alternates here. Um, we put these on here so that when the cost estimator put those numbers together, they could give us an estimate on those alternates so that we could talk about that the next time because we're going to need to order them. Uh, and then once we get the estimate, we may also want to look through there and there may be others that we decide that we want to look at. Um, but basically the alternates are, as you know, metal roofing um, is one of them. And then we have an alternate for uh, reading upside down. Oh, the cornice, and I will point that out outside. The, the, the cornice system that we have right now um, is concrete, concrete. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's got a pretty good price tag on it according to the design development estimate and so we looked at other options and one of the options we looked at was a metal panel um, and so we're going to see what the cost difference is there so we can talk about whether or not that makes a good alternate but now's the time to look at it we we're trying to think you know where are the big ticket items that we could that we could potentially modify and use a different material that still had the same kind of durability and mm -hmm low maintenance um, and that was one of the ones that we came up with so we're going to find out whether or not it's worth it they may say yeah, they're the same amount of money it doesn't matter right. we don't mm -hmm. but we don't really know until we until we get the cost out Actually, so where, I, where do sorry. we leave with the interior trim we were talking about adding some corners or, or going from a stained trim to a painted trim like you did in Bloomberg was that an alternate? that is one of the alternates yeah, that okay. we have we've kind of put together a kind of an interior um, finishes alternate. And yeah. So the idea, what we asked them to price is um, that all of the wood trim that we're showing would be paint grade, um, and then the, for the base bit, and then the alternate would be stained grade hardwood. Mm -hmm. um, we put the paneling as part of that alternate, so mm -hmm. you just have drywall, mm -hmm. and then the paneling would be part of that add, mm -hmm. um, and then the stone flooring in there. Um, we put down a, um, a vinyl woven vinyl flooring as the base bid and then the stone flooring would be the alternate. In and the so, lobby? In the lobby. I thought we had talked about polished concrete. Isn't um, that what we talked that's, about? That's yeah. That's even yeah. cheaper. Okay, we, I thought that's yeah. what we had yeah. agreed on yeah. last time. Yeah. Yeah. Um that's even cheaper. So we asked to get a price on yeah, the woven okay. vinyl to find out what that's Oh I see what you're saying. Yeah. The base is that concrete. So the no, we know how, we know how much it would t would be to take out everything and oh, to give you okay. polished concrete. I know that Got number it. already. Okay. So we we wanted to give you a middle of the road option, and in, in case um, people didn't okay. like that. I think uh, the last time we agreed, the concrete looks good. Yeah, I think everyone was really excited yeah. about mm -hmm. that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, you know, I suggested an alternate like that at Irving, and they said, what do we need the alternate for? Just give us the concrete. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of how we feel. <laughs> <laughs> you can certainly do that. Once we get the cost estimate, you may want to do that. I guess we'll see. Um, this is the clerestory plan, and it also shows portions of the low roof here. We're showing that because the overhangs we have in the bu uh, building are considerable, and we want to make sure that somebody doesn't say, when they're looking at the roof plan, hey, it looks like this roofing stops right here, even though it goes in another three feet. That, that will quickly add up to a couple thousand mm -hmm. square feet, and somebody will say, I didn't see that on my plan. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, and will those trying windows? Trying to stay, ahead, stay will, ahead of them. What was the final decision on those windows? Will they open? Or These clear story windows are fixed, is what we're pressing right now. Maybe it would be good to put in an alternate. Uh, for some of these to be operable, just to help with the stack effect and the ventilation. It's okay with me. It's um, 
the window itself is going to be more expensive, and really the only way to operate these would be electric. Mm -hmm. electric. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they'd have to be motorized. I'm so maybe the same from the floor going to operate. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm happy to find out how much it's going to cost. My impression based on the design development estimate is that you may not be able to afford it. Um, but I can, I'm happy to get the number and find out what, what, what it would be. It's some of the first level windows they open? All of the, yes, I'll point it out on the elevations. All of the smaller punched openings open on uh, the larger windows uh, at the ends of the buildings don't. Okay. Can I ask a question about the flooring in the meeting room? Where, where did we stand with that? I can't recall where we, are we still looking at a carpeted floor in there? We, that... we are. Okay. We could we could change that um, because we talked about cork. We talked about cork rubber. And we talked about a couple of different things. It's um, it's really up to you. I think <clears throat> yeah. you're going to want something that absorbs absorbs sound. Absorbs sound. Um, and so something like cork would be good, almost as good as carpet. Cork rubber mm -hmm. would probably be easier to take care of than mm -hmm. cork long term. Not as good acoustically. It's going to be a little more live in that. Um, you know, you'll be able to get 50, 60 people in there, and if they're all talking and moving chairs, it could get really, it could get pretty bad in there. Yeah. Um, and the cork would help that better, just in terms of the sound of the chairs moving across it. Cork rubber, you, there's going to be a little bit more sound with the chairs moving across it, and it's not as absorbent of sound. So it's got kind of a double whammy. Yeah. The carpet is going to be the best. Yeah. Well, I mean, my my main concern is is again is the ease of of maintaining it, and I don't you know I don't know what's going to change between now and then with our you know town custodial services and how that that's mm -hmm. going to work. Um, so, I mean, I would I would want to at least know what it would cost to have something other than carpet in there. That sure, at least whatever the best mm -hmm. compromise would be in terms of acoustics and. What could you do acoustic? Care. So yeah, is there any other kind of treatment yeah. that you could do yes, to absorb sound? Yeah, that's already in there. We have that, yeah. Are you concerned about the maintenance of the carpet? or the? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. And just, yeah, I mean, it ha needing to uh, replace that because it just gets stained and you can't. Are they do carpet squares, I assume? Or? They aren't. They're not. Okay. They're not. Yeah. We're doing broad loan. Um, could you do carpet could squares? We, yeah, maybe we should price out the alternative carpet squares. Because Car it's uh, carpet squares are going to cost more going in. Um, mm -hmm. You can replace them a little easier. But when you replace them, um, you they look awful. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because they look so clean. That's right. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. when somebody writes, wash me on the back of a truck, um, <laughs> you can read it because it's so clean compared to the dirt. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing that you can do is put the carpet tiles in the heaviest use area so that if you had those like in the entryway and you had a different, even if it's a different carpet tile, in the children's room and the adult room. Oh, sure. Yeah, I, um, no question. Carpet tile is considerably more expensive because of the way it's manufactured. Um, uh, and you certainly can change the material out. It works. It will work better in a room like the meeting room where you don't have to move materials. If it's running underneath your shelving and so forth, then getting them out is just going to almost be impossible. Um, don't you put the carpet tiles in around the shelves? Never? N not never. You could certainly, <laughs> okay. certainly do it. But that would mean that you'd have to get your furnishing delivered and then have all the carpets come back. And then you wouldn't be able to move anything. And all the, all the tiles would get cut, right? And so you wouldn't be able to swap them out as easily. You couldn't just pull one up and put a new one down because they're all cut. You'd have to have them cut. You'd have to have somebody come in and do it. Um, some of your savings might go away. It's just tricky when you have a lot of heavy stuff sitting on it. When you have wheeling things, movable furniture on it, it's a lot easier to manage. I think the main concern about the maintenance and upkeep is in the community room, or in the meeting room mm -hmm. where there's Primarily. food. Right. Yeah, and it's being used independently. We, yeah. you know, we're coming in, seeing what's, mm -hmm. you know, the damage from the night yeah. before. Right. So not so much in the main part of the library. Yeah, I'm not concerned yeah. with that as much because we yeah. are aware of what's happening. We're going to have a walk-off mat in the front, at the front door anyway, with the brushes mm -hmm. on it that mm -hmm. helps to brush off your feet that you've seen. And, and that's about 10 feet deep, 
when you come in, mm -hmm. and, and then you have stone or concrete, which is going to bang off a lot more material before people can kind of get to the front door or get down to the meeting room. What do you recall? What what's on the floor in Lunenburg? Theirs is not carpet. Theirs is that some is sort terrazzo of terrazzo tile. Terrazzo tile is is an epoxy matrix with s stone shells glass mm -hmm. that had a lot of glass in it that kind of gave it that sparkle. Mm -hmm. I recall so, that in the, in the entryway. Glass. Yes. And then uh, you step off of that onto carpet. It's, it goes in about... Okay, but I'm talking about in the meeting room at Lunenburg. What, the meeting what's room in Lunenburg... Because I don't think it's carpet. Cork. It that's is cork. cork. Okay, because it didn't... We were in there when it was empty, just the half a dozen of us, and it didn't seem incredibly, you know, live and... and no, cork does, a, cork does a good so, job. Yeah, yeah we've so, done cork in the meeting room in... Leverett as mm -hmm. well, um, and a couple of other spaces. I mean, they, they've got this cork on the floor behind the desk in Orange. It's been there for 125 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, I would I would love to know what that would cost. I don't know what anyone else. No, mine's well. Yeah. Thanks, but yeah. What is rubber cork? I just googled it. Is it is it rubber cork, or is it cork a, it, or is it like a combination? <laughs> it's a combination. Okay. Cork rubber floor is one of the things I think we suggested for your story and craft room. Mm -hmm. That kind of. That's how that conversation started. But it is a rubber floor that is kind of a foamy rubber. Uh, and then into that matrix, while it's still liquid, ground up chips of cork are added. Okay. And then when it is sheared off to height, mm -hmm. you can kind of see the cork in it, mm -hmm. um, kind of as little specks. And that helps to improve um, the kind of flexibility of it as well as the sound mm -hmm. absorption. That's different than marmoleum or something Marmoleum like that. Is, is a brand name of linoleum. And linoleum is a green product, but it's it's dense. Not as dense and hard as like a vinyl composition tile, those little square tiles mm -hmm. that you have over at the school. Yeah. Um, it's softer than that, um, and it's it's a green material. Uh, it's pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's scrubbable. Um, it does have maintenance it costs. It does have maintenance costs. Yeah. And time. Um, you gotta you gotta get a you got to get a brush machine like they use probably over at the school to wash it effectively mm -hmm. um, because it's got a little texture to it and so it can get dirty and it needs to be scrubbed with a brush. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I mean, it's a good floor. It's easy to take clean and once you scrub it, it comes out nice and clean and you, yeah. can, you can buff it. You could, I mean, you could even wax it, although I, I don't like waxing yeah. anything. Uh, so this kind of still shows our PV system. We have some new PV array layouts from our engineers, but those haven't been updated up here yet. Um, we get some roofing details that show up. We've got gutters in a couple of spots now, which is probably new. There's a gutter along this low roof here because the sidewalk is close, and a gutter along there. And then we've got a gutter along here, again, because it's over the sidewalk. Let's pick that water up so it's not running on people's heads when they're coming to the building. Would the PV panels be the sort of flat matte black, or would they have the little lines? Do you know? Uh, I haven't seen a cut on them yet. We typically, these guys, Garcia Gorski and Susan, would typically specify the black ones. Some kind of standard roofing details. Is the gutter all the way along the edge of the, the roof, or is it just in certain areas? It is just in certain areas. So we would probably want some sort of a drip line on the uh, right the base of the walls. Yes, that shows on the side. Uh, and you, you don't have it, so that you, um, does everybody understand that question? Mm -hmm. This would be crushed on drip, so that the the plants and the lawn doesn't get eroded by the by the dripping. So this along there, and then along there, so that when you walk along the sidewalks, you, it doesn't go drip on your head. So all the small windows that you see, uh, these are all operable. These mm -hmm. larger guys at the ends mm -hmm. don't have all the mm -hmm. windows on them. But all of the smaller ones that are down low all operate. These guys at this point are fixed. One time ago we talked about shading devices for the vest facade. Are they are there internal shades? Internal shades. Okay. that those shades were going to be motorized or not necessarily? Motorized, I, motorized on the tall windows. 
uh, just because it's so cumbersome. And then the smaller windows, it, it makes sense to just have them uh, manual. Uh, this shows how the, the cast concrete um, joints lay out, because if we don't show them how to do it, they'll come up with whatever they want. Um, and so that's how it's coordinated with the windows up in the Clarence story, and this is how it happens on the gables. Um, but these are basically joints in the masonry, so a bit of a, a masonry joint. Um, and we'll pick a mortar, a sealant that matches the color. And get from the ground, you shouldn't see it. Um, building sections, these are not new for you, I don't think. These, hasn't, these haven't really changed. The wall sections are showing a little bit more information on them. Um, we're flagging the details. And you can go find them again if you want to find out what that detail is. It's, it's detail number three on sheet A4.4. And you can go look it up and, uh, and, and find it. But we have uh, an insulation, rigid insulation, underneath the floor right now. And the question is whether or not we're going to have uh, that special type of insulation in here. And we can also put it on interior walls. We've got um, acoustical insulation around the majority of the rooms. Um, so all the toilet rooms, all of the meeting rooms, and then all of the major separations between the departments, so between the children's and the main, um, and then between children's and young teens. adults, teens, mm -hmm. right, and then around all offices, mm -hmm. and all mechanical spaces, and all toilets. And so in a library, that is That's almost all of the walls. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so there is certainly an opportunity to, in addition to that acoustic insulation, to put in the phase changing materials in that system as well. Um, so the framing cavity, is it un uninsulated? That's right. We've, we've got uh, an air and vapor barrier um, mm -hmm. on the outside face of the sheathing, and then rigid insulation in the cavity. And then this guy is empty with the exception of some bat that we have down at the bottom. So how much of the rigid exterior insulation do you have? Two inches? Three inches. Three inches. And then I think we have seven and a half in the roof. So is there a re so another sort of alternate that I would suggest is to look into bat insulation in the framing cavity uh, to increase the R value of the wall system. I can look at that. Yeah. We just can't fill it because it will move my dew point in past my air and vapor barrier. But what type of air and vapor barrier are you using? An impermeable? Impermeable. So it should be fine with this climate. It should not be a problem, even with the bat insulation. But you would be increasing the R value a lot. It sure. should be reducing energy consumption. Yeah, yeah. I could do a, I could, I could do an R13 or an R19 in there. I might be able to get away with an R19. I'll, I'll take a look at it. Do you just use a standard fiberglass or like a rock wall? What would you use? Oh, uh, we would typically specify a fiberglass. But, I mean, a rock wall would do, do it as well. Mm -hmm. Our value is about the same, so it's well, it's yeah. more for rock wool. Yeah, for instance. slightly. <laughs> yeah, but is it yes. costly or is that why? It costs slightly, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. That's definite. Yeah. <laughs> so the benefits in the energy reductions do not really um, mm -hmm. pay off the higher cost. Mm -hmm. Phil, the rigid under the slab is that five or ten feet in from the exterior, or is that underneath the entire slab? It is four feet. Yep. around the perimeter. That's yep. all I have. Is there an argument to go all the way? You certainly could. It's uh, cost. Um, certainly, if you were to buy more insulation, I'd put it in the roof. In terms of your yeah. heat loss, you're going to have less yeah. going down. You see detail. Ground. Twenty years ago, you see it under the entire slab. And just the heat kind of loss is, is not that great. This, yeah. It's temperate mm -hmm. under there, and and when it's seventy in here, the soil underneath there is going to kind of get up to that regular temperature, and uh, mm -hmm. below that, you're you're losing it. But um, Soil's a pretty good insulator. Uh, I just think you're, you're going to get more bang for your buck yeah, up, up in the envelope in this climate. Now some more wall sections is your entrance. So these are these tall windows. This is basically a curtain wall system. That's why there's no operables in it. You can do it, but it's not as efficient and it costs a lot of money. And so. That's just a simple curtain wall system. The door, front door is a curtain wall system. 
uh, and the rest of the windows are an aluminum clad wooden window. Uh, as you both drop, this is the recess for the front door. So how high is the curtain wall? I cannot read our numbers from here, I'm sorry. That's about 18 feet. Height? Yep. So would you consider maybe using fitted glass for a proportion um, of the curtain wall just to limit some of the glare and solar heat gain? What, how much of a frit are you talking about? 50%? 50%, yeah. Just to provide some shading because it's a relatively large area, south facing. You certainly, uh, you certainly could. Mm -hmm. Let me find out how much that's going to cost. Sounds good. <laughs> a, f a ceramic frit on glass is basically a, um, uh, a a pattern that you put on the pardon me that you put on the glass and then it gets fired onto the glass so it be, it's becomes bonded to the mm -hmm. glass. Um, we would typically in insulated glass we put it on one of the inside faces so that it doesn't attract mm -hmm. dirt and stuff like that. Um, it's typically white and you put them in kind of a dots or squares or lines. The lines, yeah. And um, and you can specify that it is 25, 50, 75% open or closed, um, and basically it provides shading built into the glass. Mm -hmm. you, can uh, you can still see through it, uh, even if it's 90% closed, you'll still be able to see the sky and watch a, flame, a plane kind of go by. Uh, but it's kind of the difference when you look at a fence, it's hard to see, but if you're kind of driving by in your car, you can kind of mm -hmm. see what's going on behind it. So it's kind of similar to that. Um, you can still see through it and kind of see what's going on. Uh, but we're talking about it on the upper portion of the windows anyway, and so it really would just help with some shade. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll find out about the cost. We do it quite a bit on things like um, insulated glass skylights and stuff like that. Especially on glass that's this tall, you don't, you're not seeing basically above 8 feet or so, you're not seeing, uh, and then you're still allowing daylight to penetrate inside mm -hmm. the space, but with the frit, you're providing some shading. Yeah, I think that most people wouldn't even notice that it was there, yeah. depending on the frit that we put on. Because, because in high performance buildings, the glazed facades are the most problematic area, so you mm -hmm. want to reduce the amount of glass and glazing that you have, and this helps. Section details. These have all been coordinated with the manufacturers of the concrete panels and so forth, and we we have simplified this a little bit, which is nice. Um, since the design development cost estimate, this is actually a little easier to build than it was before. Um, so that's good, and um, we're hoping that gets reflected in our, in our cost estimate. Um, the numbers that you see in all these notes refer to the specification sections. Um, and we do that because, basically because of the filed sub-bid rules. And if you're not real clear about who owns what, um, people are going to point fingers and say, oh, I thought He's they were doing it. it. And if everybody thinks somebody else is doing it, nobody does it. Nobody does it, right? If two people can point and both say, I thought they were doing it, then nobody owns it, even though, even though it's on your mind. So it's, it's, uh, key noting is what we call it, and it helps to just tie who does what to the specifications some more section details. We're chasing these things through, finding cold bridges and voids in our insulation systems, filling in. Uh, plan details, this is just kind of a blow up of a, kind of a large section of the floor plan where the complicated things come together and I know people are going to be asking about what goes where and how you put it together. But that you can see in there and that's our kind of a typical wall section with the stud and the insulation and now we're talking about the potential of doing fluffy insulation in the inside the walls in addition to the rigid that's in the cavity. Uh, reflected ceiling plan, not a lot of new information on this thing because we haven't got an updated lighting plan from our consultants yet. You'll see it when we get to electrical, but they're still showing these big rings in their, uh, in the main space. Um, interior elevations. Some of these are new. They show the um, the paneling that we're talking about potentially making as part of an alternate. The paneling happens uh, behind the circulation desk and on the opposite wall um, around the 
the entranceway uh, and then down at the ends of the building uh, where these curtain wall sections are. What would you use? Like a reclaimed wood or what are you thinking? Paneling? Yeah. Paneling, we were thinking of it, it well, it's going to be pretty simple. It's going to be quarter inch hardwood plywood that would be stained to finish and then just put up and with small joints in between. It's nothing, nothing fancy. It's, it's uh, cost effective. It gives you, gives you a nice bang for a buck. Um, it gives you a nice uh, wood feel. Um, it's not very expensive. How about crab apple? <laughs> yeah, how much did we get out of that tree? <laughs> if you, if you, you do that. If you had enough crab apples, <laughs> you might get a couple side tables out of those crab apples. You know, I'll but go apple, furniture. <laughs> you might get a couple side Well, it's hard to tell. Apple is actually very good for making tool handles. That's very tough. I restore old tools. Apple's hard to find. Except the crab apple disappears. We <laughs> <know they're laughs> yeah. You could probably sell it as a fundraiser to the woodworkers. Okay. And, and, uh, <laughs> That's a good idea. And uh, old tool restorers. I bet you they find one or two of them in town. Mm -hmm. uh, the interior elevations is the, the casework system in the, in the children's story and craft room. Do, is there trim fell at the transition between low to high? ceilings like you have it in Lindenburg. We did talk about adding that line right yeah. in here. That's yeah. not the, that doesn't show in the drawings yet. We do I'm have to add that part we, to that yeah. interior finish. We have the upper line here yeah. that we talked about yeah. and then there's wood base in the main space yeah. and, the, and, and the suggestion is that we add one more line. And we did talk about that in the office. That seemed to strike a chord. Didn't yeah, Luna really? Yeah. That was the one she loved. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, what that, uh, I will point it out here, if you don't mind, so that everybody understands what we're talking about. If you look at the kind of typical building section, like this one for example, there's the high spaces and then the low spaces. Uh, and right now we have kind of a trim line down at the bottom and then there's two trim lines up here at the top around the kind of windows and the beams. And the suggestion was, is that when you walk through these spaces, the other major line is that transition between the high and the low. Mm -hmm. And if we could punctuate that with one more trim line trim at that point, um, I think it'd kind of really help to have that, that line. Because we have a lot of things that line up with that, all the doors and the uh, windows that come into the, the lower spaces all kind of happen at that line, all kind of tracing around. That, that all lines up, so that makes sense. Would you mind pointing out on the interior elevations which are operable windows? So in, in the, yeah, there you go. Those are okay. all off. This is the children's department, and so down at the end of the children's department, those would not be operable. Uh, in here, that needs to be updated, but there are operable windows at the ends of the stacks and at the side of the stacks. Uh, all of the windows in the meeting room are operable. Operable in the director's office is a window. Operable in the, all the windows in the young adults department. Uh, there's one window in the staff room that's operable. Um, does that answer the question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Basically, all, all, the, all the low windows, mm -hmm. uh, all the low punched openings. Punched um, Caseworks and cabinets, we've got tall cases that happen in for storage, uh, mainly in the story and craft room and in a couple other places. And then we've got some cabinets, kitchen type cabinets with drawers in them and wall cabinets. And then there's a sink based cabinet that doesn't have a drawer that operates. The cabinet up above, this is the window seat that's in the children's department. It's all made out of uh, uh, plywood. So it'll be, it'll be painted under the base bed and then it would be hardwood plywood under that alternate. Uh, and then under the furnishings, you can get some cushions that go on that. That would be held in place with Velcro so the kids don't throw them around. Uh, kind of a typical work counter. Most of these countertops are made with linoleum, marmoleum, um, because it's a, it's a green material and it's, uh, it's got a nice feel to it when you're writing. Old desktops used to be made out of it. It kind of feels like leather. Versus, uh, it's got a little give to it when you're writing. 
So uh, regarding the casework, is the search desk right now still kind of a placeholder, or if we figure yes. out how to incorporate? We have we have not. Basically, 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 we were treating it right now is that it's part of furnishings mm -hmm. rather than part of the building. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but does does any uh, under slab power or anything have to be coordinated with? We do have that, yes. So that that shows the electrical plans. We are right. pulling it up in that area for both of the desks. So we'll we just have, have to have it in the floor. Just make sure that where the power is going to pop up in the floor, it will work for what we have across the street and or something else if that doesn't work. Or yes, I mean, right, yeah. right. I think the idea of doing the mobile is, is that we could wire them and then you can just plug into the floor and then the outlets would be in, kind of in the furniture itself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is a little blow up of the paneling and the entrance that goes into the workroom behind the desk and so we've squeezed these windows down a little bit and then we have shelving down below and then we have shelving on either side of the windows. So that's what the shelving looks like on the tall side, on either side of the window. So you don't have to bend down to get to all that shelving. And that, the paneling may be part of that alternate potentially but the shelving itself will stay. Okay. Uh, toilet room plans and elevations. You're suggesting a larger scale tile instead of the little ones. The bigger ones, less joint, less grout. Mm -hmm. Easier to clean. Easier to maintain. And you have the water fountain. We have a water fountain. It's built into that little niche in the yeah. front lobby. And we are showing a high-low unit and a bottle filler. Nice. Um, I, is the tile in the bathroom all four walls, or just the it's wet walls? All, it's all four walls. Full height, yeah. Yeah, all the way up to the ceiling. Yeah. We have done some times where you take it up partway, and then, you know, you get the mirrors half on and right, half off, right. and what do you do? And right. There's an outlet that's half in of the tile and half out of the tile, yeah. and it's right. You, nobody wants to have that conversation on site. I don't want to have that yeah. conversation. <laughs> so we just take it up. Yeah, maintenance-wise, that's, that's better. It's just mm -hmm. easier. And, and the rooms are so small that it's... Yeah. I don't even know if we'll get to a file. It's a bid on file. Uh, so door and frame types. These are the interior uh, and exterior doors and then some of the interior frames and some of the details that's going on. We also have aluminum uh, interior storefront is what's, uh, what these door frames are inside. The, uh, the larger ones aren't drawn in here yet. You saw them on the elevations. Uh, but basically it's all a pre-finished aluminum system. Uh, room finish schedule, door schedule, these are mainly placeholders for the main point right now. I mean, you look at the at the head jam and sill details and I can see that they're all exactly the same. So somebody just plugged something in there. So those are the interior store front, for example, that goes into the store platform. I'm sorry, into the children's room. These are the window types, and again, these are these are all operable. One louver type, although I think he added a second one. Some pretty more details. That's it for my drawing. Structural drawings. This is basically like a, a brief summary of the um, of the uh, specification requirements. But basically, if you wanted to go and find out what the loading requirements are here for anything, he's got it all in one spot, so it's great if you. If you, for example, hear from your PV array people, what do I need to figure for, you know, loading, right? It, it'll be on the sheet. And if they need that, just send us to it. They've got some standard concrete details for how to build various things in concrete, how to step your foundation and footing if you need to, how to lay out control joints on the floor. These are standard details. Some kind of standard steel connection details. You may be using some of these, but probably not all of them. So what's your take lately? Have tariffs gone into place as steel prices, have they shot up? They've crept up a little, but now it's still a, we're lining up well for the timing of this project, the time of the year of the project on the heels of the senior center. Um, <laughs> we've seen very aggressive numbers right now. So A lot of steel that we get comes from Canada. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. And I don't know how much of an import, impact yeah, most of that comes from Canada. The, the fight between uh, China Trump and the U.S. on yeah. steel is, is really having an impact on that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it seems like it all comes from Canada. And this isn't a steel-heavy project, so. 
um, foundation plan. Uh, so when it comes time to renovate <laughs> these column locations right here um, and the braces that you see are all that has to stay inside. So all of the walls can come out. We'll all be dead then. The only thing that is, <laughs> this, this is one of the reasons. No, we'll renovation? Well, I hope we're not alive to see this being renovated. Well, I'm hoping someone's going to call me about it. I'm creep out here. And... <laughs> Low roof framing plan, he, he doesn't use any joists or anything, so it's all wide frame sections. Um, so this is the low roof framing, upper roof framing. So wherever you need to hang something, there'll be steel there to hang it on. So no problem there. Um, column schedule, uh, base plate details. Uh, these are all the various wind braces that we're using inside the building. You know, all hurricane rated. Can resist rated. a tornado? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the idea of these wind braces is also obviously to keep the building from racking in the wind and take all those wind loads um, and bring them down into the ground. Um, and so and if you look on the, on, the, um, on the foundation plan, you will also see some of these guys also have like a grade beam underneath them that connects them underneath the ground as well, to tie them all together. And there's a grade beam detail, and so there's a couple of those happening in the building. You're footing some foundation details. In some cases, we're stepping the footing down a little bit, I mean, uh, the foundation down a little bit on the outside of the building, so we can bring the masonry down below grade or to grade where it steps off a little bit, so you don't see a big piece of foundation sticking out. So it looks nice. Steel roof framing details, connections. We're getting into the good stuff. Fire protection, standard details, and there's their symbols and so forth. Um, how to run a pipe through a wall. Um, but here's a good uh, example of a pi how a pipe comes into the building. This is the foundation wall and there's the floor. All the pipes come down through the foundation wall and then turn up and through the floor. Electrical conduits do the same thing. So that's why we need to get these things in early if we're going to run an electrical conduit out for this or for that. Um, there'll be a couple of spares that run out of the building, and I'll point those out when we get electric to electrical. But those spare conduits are going to go from here to the transformer, and from here to a utility pole, and so it's hard to kind of reroute them. They'll be encased in concrete for the most part. Um, fire protection plan, there's your fire protection system coming in from the new main that we're running. There's your fire protection room. Fire department connection and a bell outside, and then this is basically how the the heads lay out inside the building. <laughs> Typical plumbing details: <clears throat> how to hang a pipe, how to penetrate a wall, how to get it inside the building. Uh, we are using trap primers in these guys. Yeah. So each of the floor drains. A floor drain has a trap underneath it because all plumbing fixtures have to have a trap, but um, kind of gone are the days where people dumped a bucket of water on the floor and started mopping. Mm -hmm. And so floor drains sometimes will dry out, the water will dry out of the trap, and that would allow sewer gases to come in. So we have a trap primer on there, which leaks a little water in there every time you flush a toilet or something, so that the trap stays wet and you don't have to worry about it drying out. Can I ask a question about it, uh, water? So you mentioned about the the lawn and it needing to be watered to establish itself. Yes. Do we have exterior? Do we have water on the outside? I mean, we're not going to have any kind of a sprinkler system, I'm assuming. Um, so, what is on the outside? Uh, there are hose bins. That's on the next sheet. Oh, okay. I'll point and, um, I think what my landscape architect is specifying is a temporary irrigation system. Mm -hmm. Mm, okay. And so it'll be there to get your plants established, and then mm -hmm. it gets removed. Okay. So it lays on the surface of the ground. It's just not so like a ground. little drip system or something. Yes. Yeah. And so it's to get the and that is allowed under lead regulations for um, plants that don't need water. Um, is that something that ties into the ex the exterior spigots? For yes. Earth? Okay. Yeah. And so it's it's hoses basically, mm -hmm. uh, drip hoses and so forth, and it will basically take care of itself and then it'll get removed mm -hmm. um, basically at the end of the warranty period that'll give you a year mm -hmm. um, and then after that you're going to want to water th some things especially when it gets dry that'll also be that all that stuff will be in, in your owner's operations and maintenance manuals mm -hmm. right which will be will probably fall to you 
Um, how to change a headlight. How to yeah. change a flap. Right. You'll be out there yeah. with your watering can. <laughs> So is the irrigation something that the landscaper would install as part of his base? Yes. Okay, yeah, so yeah. we don't have to worry about dealing with it. And then they come and take it out. Yeah. Um, unless you want them to leave it, and then you remove it. Mm -hmm. If you want them to leave it, probably just they probably okay. Mm -hmm. um, but there's your plumbing system. And so at the back of the building, you have the toilet, over here in the mechanical room, and then one out here by the sprinkler room. Mm -hmm. So we don't have one out the front. We don't have any plumbing out here. I can have them run a line out there, but extra hose. We'll just get some extra, extra, hose. extra hose. Yes, that's that's what I would do. HVAC duct work. I know. <laughs> so um, the idea there here is that basically each one, every time you see one of these units, it's got its own thermostat. And so he kind of takes care of the space that it's in. He walked you through this before. And if if you get the sun is coming up um, and this room is starting to get warm and this room is still cold, this is going to pull the heat out of this room and then the piping system can bring that warm water over here and then use it for that system to warm that space when that one's in cooling. So they're intelligent and they talk to one another about who needs what. And then there's the piping system that goes along with it to bring the the hot and cold water out, and then we have the outdoor mounted units sitting on a pad in a little group out here. Is that screened in some way with the fencing, plantings, or something Plants. like that? Plantings, yeah. no fencing around it. These things are, aren't that big, but okay. they're, you know, versus the, mm -hmm. these are guys are, pretty, those are, those are pretty much drawn to scale. Three, four by six, something like that, kind of order. No, 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 no. Mechanical schedules. Anything you always wanted to know, the size of each one of these units, you can find them on there and see what the brand names are. That's probably one of the smaller ones it looks like, and the bigger ones are probably three times that length. Mm -hmm. But so it's not much different. The smaller one's not much different. It's something you'd see at a house. Some details on piping and how the systems are working. Um, diagrams about how uh, sequencing is supposed to work so that they can understand that. There's an energy recovery ventilator that sits in the mechanical room. That's the stats on that guy. I was looking to see if they've got their automatic temperature controls shown here. So I can show that to you. I think that's probably going to be um, in the specification. Uh, electrical has their own abbreviations. Electrical is last trade. If you include technology with it. Um, this is the light fixture schedule, and that's got all the brand names that they're specifying and the sizes of the units and their general notes. Automated, automatic lighting control system. So this is tied into the building management system. Um, the automatic lighting controls, this is the type of light switch you would have. It's got a couple of different pre-programmed scenes. For some spaces, like your meeting room, so if you were having a talk versus a slideshow versus a gallery show, you could when you could program those three things, and you could just press the button, and the lights would go up and down and do whatever they're supposed to do, and it would remember remember what's going on. Um, it's also got an override button where you can just press the button, and all the lights turn off, um, and then that override will will default the next time you have a time change in the system. In other words, it. it if you hit that button and shut everything off, if it's set to turn itself on at 8 o'clock in the morning the next day, that will kick in and it will turn itself on. Uh, site electrical, how we're connecting to the utilities and where the site lights are around the building. And again, we won't be moving these um, based on what happened at the planning board. What we are doing with the site lights is the senior center project is going to buy those site lights for us including the poles. We're going to put in the footings and foundations as part of this project. They will have the site lights sitting for there for us so that they match their site lights. Right. And our electrical contract will install. Even though the library is only a few months behind senior centers, sometimes with fixtures and manufacturers, their, you know, their year ends and they start a new model and they can't get the so for the sake of, you know, however many half a dozen you know, fixtures we said. 
he made a deal with the senior center. So they haven't asked us to pay for it yet. I know. <laughs> oh, my television. <laughs> Strike that. <laughs> Edit that out. Um, some of the underground electrical stuff. Um, so these are the conduit banks that I was talking about. Um, and so these three of these are going to be full of something, and then there's going to be a spare in there. Um, and so when you, if you needed to pull something in at, at a later date, you could, you could do that. Uplighting for the flagpole. I think they changed, I think they changed the rules. The USGBC made an exception so you can light your flag at night now. That's, that's hot off the presses. Yeah. Didn't we take the flagpole out? We did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But you, if you but want if it, we have if you want to put it out, yeah, now we could. You're not going to lose yeah. the lead point. If you You're not going to lose yeah. the lead point. Uh, so this lighting hasn't changed. You still see that showing that crazy stuff. This, the lighting that we have in here, I think is going to be just fine. The way I haven't shown, but the, the high ceiling lighting is still nutty. A blow up of the electrical and tel server room in there. So is any of the geeks that want to check out what's going on in there. Um, and there is a backup um, furnace or something like that, or no? There is a backup boiler in here. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so these guys are floor outlets. Um, so we do have two sets under the desk, and then there's one under the showroom's desk, and then we picked up the computers and so forth. So I would, um, I should probably send you this so you could take a look with your staff and see if you want to move some of this stuff around. We could certainly move it a little bit later. Mm -hmm. um, some contractors uh, don't care too much if you move it, but you know somebody like Griffin yeah. may say, yeah. Oh, yeah, you want to move this over there? That's right. I'll credit you that one and then charge you an extra for that one. <laughs> so um, let me send that to you and you can take a course look. Yeah, I can see, I mean, I do recall that we had been talking about moving, moving the some of this stuff around. Yeah, yeah. moving some of that. This is the last time we have to do this. Yeah. Page turn. So that is the PV ray. The roof is looking a little white right now, but you can see they kind of laid this thing out a little bit differently. I think your vendor took a look at that as well. Mm -hmm. Part of the issue here is what the setback requirements are. And the setback requirements from the edges of the roof change a little bit based on the slope of the roof and based on the height of the roof. I don't understand all those rules, but I think they're NFPA rules, which is why I didn't know what they were, because I never saw them in the building code, but they're an NFPA requirement. Um, and so as long as they, there was a question, right, as long as they fulfill those rules, that meets those rules, it doesn't matter to me if, if your vendor has a different way to do it and can get a more efficient system on the roof, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm happy to look at that and send that to them. Because where this has the flatter slope, if you have a heavy snow year, it's going to be obscured, it won't be producing, things like right. that. So you want to consider that. If you can get more up mm -hmm. here, it's a smaller yeah. inclination yeah. angle as well. That's so right. the ones mm -hmm. on the top part of the roof are going to be more efficient. Yeah. You're going yeah. to get more out of it. So we've got some questions on here. You can see, uh, you know, in red, like, why? Um, mm -hmm. And we're going to get some answers for ourselves. But if, if we're going to have some, something they want to come share with us, uh, lightning protection, mm -hmm. Details. We have a lightning protection, lightning arrestor system on the roof. In case you have a strike, it helps with your insurance rates. Yes, it does. They're not that expensive to put in. It's kind of a standard. If you want us to take it out, we will. Uh, one lies up. Our PV system is part of the riser diagram. This is basically a, a schematic of your overall electrical system and kind of how that works from the from the meter. Uh, up to the panels that you have in the building. They would do, um, they separate uh, lighting panels and power panels, so all of your lighting will be on one set of panels and all your power will be on another set of panels so that you will never have a situation where when your refrigerator turns on, you know, the lights dim a little bit because <laughs> they come from different, the power comes from different panels. That wouldn't happen anyway, but um, that's what causes that, is because it's drawn from the same spot. 
That's what an outlet looks like. There's, there's wire nuts drawn on that diagram. Yeah, that is the only problem. The only problem with CAD drawing is that you can zoom in too much. Okay. It's probably threads drawn on those wire nuts. power requirements for all your mechanical equipment. Right? This is just to save for save arguments. Right? I just don't want to argue with anybody about what they're doing. Awesome. Telecom fire alarm more riser diagrams. Also at what point in time Phil do you um, give the fire suppression and drawings to the fire chief. And we will typically um, discuss that with them on a regular basis. Um, typically what happens is that my engineers are talking to them already. Um, and then when we get to the point where we're pretty close to going to bid, um, so probably coming up in the next couple of weeks, we will send them a set of documents mm -hmm. and then ask if they want to come sit down and go over it all. Here's your rooftop weather station. I sent you this drawing as well, right? I sent you the, yeah. the plan plus the details, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the photovoltaic system. And I believe... Yeah. I'm looking for the, for the output feed to the... to the monitor you asked about. But I don't see it. But we will be gathering data because the building management, energy management system uses the data that comes from this as well. Um, and then we just have that put on to the, to the screen in kind of an easy to use graphic form with the numbers on it that everybody can see. And you'd set it up for a net meter or something like that? The, Usually with PV, they're doing net metering, things like that. Um, I can ask about it. This is so that you can you see what's coming out of it and what you're um, and what you're getting versus what's coming in, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think the way that basically they've explained it to me is, is that this is connected into your main system, and so if in the situation, say for example, you're closed and you're on setback on your mechanical systems, for example, um, your meter will just run backwards. Um, Will this thing track how much power it's producing on a regular basis for you use in-house? Yes. Um, but it isn't metered separately as far as what the utility can see. That's the way I understand it. I don't know enough about that. But that's certainly something to consider now. See how they want it set up. I'll ask the question about it. It's a bit more involving and costly to have net metering versus sort of a standalone system for the building. So it can be done, but higher cost. Do they allow another way at a, a municipal building? You could do it either way? It depends on the um, energy provider, and, you know, how they're set up. Right. Who's the energy provider for the library? Eversource. 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 So it might be worthwhile to check with them. Fire alarm. Yeah, here's Michael in my office saying, yeah, you can't mount a horn stroke the fire alarm system on the glass. <laughs> you have to find a new home for that. That's pretty standard. They're going to think of it's on glass, switches on glass, thermostats on glass. Yeah. Security system information that is blocked. Sorry, that is blocked and kind of what we're going to now. Here's our technology plan. And so if you look at the plan and you see a symbol there, um, you could find out on their sheet what it means. And you could also get kind of a full view of 
of what it looks like, what the outlet will look like when, you're, when you see that. And so I will send this to you as well because in addition to the power plant, this will all tell you where all the drops are. You know, mm -hmm. there's a two on top of it, you'll have two of those in the floor. And what the backbone of your system looks like for data. And what all your patch panels look like on your rack. Head end. They will probably be buying a computer. Um, and if you don't want to spend the money on that, maybe just give an IP address and then you could, it would be addressable and you can pull it from your machine or from somewhere else in the world. That's it. Nice. That's all? <laughs> That's yeah. all of it. <laughs> yeah. A hundred years ago, a building like this would be what? Six sheets. Yeah. yeah. It's funny, as you were flipping through this, I did wonder, what did you do before you had all this automation? Did you just do the exact same stuff just by hand, or was it just a lot? So that answers that. Well, we didn't, just we didn't have to draw wire nuts. Yeah. yeah. Um, the way this, um, but no, we, 20 years ago, we did the same amount of work as we're showing here. We do it all by hand. Yeah. Um, we were drawing on mylar, and so if it came to something like, we wouldn't draw that. Um, it would be di more diagrammatic. Um, it's just because it only needs to be drawn once, and it could be used for every job, right? You know, no one sweated drawing that one for this job. Um, so, but everything else we drew by, we drew by hand, and it's just as much as you see on here now. Do you miss those days? Uh, yes, I do. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason why is because you can cut and paste this from another project. Right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it gets cut and pasted, and it is not really the same. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's, it doesn't. It's not what we have in this building. Right. We have something else, um, and that doesn't really happen so much when it comes to things like uh, well, this. But window details. Right? The window detail. The way a window fits into a brick wall. Uh, with a steel stud backup and insulation in the cavity, it's pretty simple. It's pretty. It's the same everywhere. Um, but not everything is the same, and sometimes the distance between the stud and the brick is different. And sometimes where the window falls in that assembly is different. You might want to have it closer to the face or off. And you need to make sure that somebody hasn't just pasted mm -hmm. that in mm -hmm. and not thought about what yeah. they were drawing. When you have to draw it by hand, yeah. you, have you have to, to decide it. where is it going to go when you say it. That's three inches back, and you measure it. But when you just pull it in, and two and a half, that looks right. Mm -hmm. So it's up to me. <laughs> QC, go around and make sure that everybody is yeah. drawing something that actually belongs in this building. Yeah. And not, not mounting out that's on glass. So what do we do next? Next, this set of documents has gone to the cost estimator and a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And so that estimate is due next week sometime. And so two weeks. Two weeks before so, we meet like again? To, okay. I would like to come with a cost estimate. Mm -hmm. And uh, that will have the base bid and the alternates. And then mm -hmm. I may have some additional alternates mm -hmm. to suggest. Um, depending on when the estimate comes in. If it comes in like an hour before I have to leave. Mm -hmm. um, and then I may have a little kind of a cheat sheet that goes with it with some corrections on it. If it comes in when it should, I will actually correct it and send it back and have them revise mm -hmm. it. Um, it'll be a little bit more scrubbed and ready for prime time when I bring it up. That's the plan. So this week of March 11th? Yeah, so you were talking like March 12th. I know Tuesdays generally have been working for people. It won't, it won't be this long. Sorry, everyone. No, that's okay. And do we have a trustee meeting that night? The 12th, yes. Yeah. Might be a little late. I've got a, the 12th we're talking about. Mm -hmm. I've got a 5.30 meeting. At, I'm on the board at the Survival Center in Northampton, but it should be a one-hour meeting. So I, I might be a little late, but I, I can still do two. So, so Patrick, what, what would you think if that date works for you, Phil? Maybe the 12th we, is fine. Yep. Maybe we could um, work with Joanne and do the trustee meeting first and have this not start at 7, maybe more like 7.30 to... 7.30 would be fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
like it's running this, yeah. I mean, Phil's coming out from, it's easier for us. Phil's got to drive home yeah. after the meeting. Yeah. yeah. yeah but you say it won't like be, three, so. <laughs> but, but you say it won't be that long, right? So it's not like you're going to be here. Depends on how good the estimate numbers are. <laughs> if the estimate is right where it needs to be, it'll be 20 minutes. <laughs> Um, no, but I mean, the, going over the estimate, and I think I want everybody to understand it. Um, I, I won't be walking through every line on it, mm -hmm. but I'll leave copies and people can go over it. Okay. Um, but the, uh, understanding the number, I think, is the first part, and then we have to figure out what's going to be an alternate. Um, some of them you may decide, you know what, we just can't afford that, and we'll take that off the table. Mm -hmm. and, or we may say, let's take a piece of this one and a piece of that one and combine them in one alternate. And maybe there's two other things that we'll think of between now and then um, that you would like to make an alternate. And we'll try to come up with three or four alternates. I wouldn't go much further than that. No. You can do five if you really want to, but three or four is good. Five sends a bad signal. I think we talked about before, it shows you know the owner doesn't know what yep. they want or not sure what they can afford. And, and if it's, you know, it's, or it sends a red, red flag of yeah. people bidding it. And so if they have, if for whatever reason they have a choice to make, and there's one clean job with one alternate, and the happy library's got six alternates, they're going to go the other way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This, job has, this job has money. Mm -hmm. Right. What they're doing. Right. right. I guess that's. So we're going to aim for the 12th. I'm going to confirm. I want to talk with Joanne first, mm -hmm. and I don't know what's on the trustee agenda. <coughs> yep. But okay. If we can wrap our business up by 7.30, if we maybe start our stuff earlier and... Mm -hmm. Would anybody like me to post these so you can download them? It's a couple hundred megabytes, and you can, but if you've got a fast server, you can download them all and look at them in PDF. I'd like a copy. Mm -hmm. Just um, I want to send a, a copy to Andrea, too, from MBLC. I mm -hmm. told her I'd send her the 75%. Mm -hmm. Do we get to keep this set? Or are you checking this back? Um, it's got my red marks on it, so I'd rather take it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, if you just post it, that's probably the simplest thing. Then. To send you that one page, yeah, right? <laughs> for the drugs. Two, two pages. Right. I'm going to say the power yeah. of the data okay. plan, so you can take a look. Mm -hmm. I would have paid closer attention if I knew. Yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good to see. Mm -hmm. Well, Phil is taking his notes. Is there anything else we need to cover this evening? That's our tentative time. So do you imagine that you would just bid the PV separately and kind of keep it tangential to this? No, it's part of the... Right now it's part of this. Mm -hmm. The cost of something comes in high, we may be talking about yeah. that. Because <laughs> you certainly could. Um, Irving decided to bid their PV. They have a ground-mounted array in the back of their building, and they decided to bid that separately. Because it is so easy to kind of carve that off, the, so the, the, con the, the building contract includes the conduits and everything that go out for that, and then we're going to bid the PD array separately. And that just means you don't have to pay the markup to the general. <laughs> Sorry. Um, or, and because it's going to be a markup to the electrical contractor, and, and then potentially a markup, I don't know if you markup files of it, I don't know. But it just um, it means that they can have a relationship with them and they're kind of on the back side of the site and they're not going to get anybody anybody's way. And once they get halfway through construction, they'll know how much money they have left in their contingency fund and they just felt better about it. it gave them a little more flexibility. But Granby bid theirs separately, like, and for similar reasons. You know, they took all their money out of their first yeah. Right, right. Yeah. At the last minute to get that number just below $2 million ask mm -hmm. at the town meeting. Mm -hmm. And before this meeting wraps up, just wondering your opinion on those clerestory windows, whether they're fixed or the ability to open it. The last thing we want to do is create a situation where you're dealing with a lot of maintenance, you know, some window won't shut and you're trying... Mechanical. Yeah, I don't, I don't really see it as desirable to have to deal with windows that open and shut at a level you can't reach without calling, you know, DPW guys to come because yeah. we're not going to get on the ladder that high enough mm -hmm. to make the show. Yeah, because we've seen that you yeah. struggle sometimes. With walk <laughs> 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 <laughs>
That wasn't yeah. the genesis of my question. Yeah. It was just more <laughs> making it, you know. It's going to be hard for me. I'm going yeah. mean, yeah. to have to say. Yeah. yeah, no, I don't, I mean, I don't see that, I mean, it seems like the building has enough open windows that if we need fresh air, we can yeah. open windows. It seems like the, the system is designed to, I mean, we, we trust that it's going to work the way you right. say yeah. it's supposed to work and it's going to cool, the cool gonna, yeah. different yeah. rooms. Yeah. Feel roughly what was the cost be? Uh, I don't have a good sense for that. I, I would assume that what we're talking about is not all of those windows open. Right. Mm -hmm. Maybe right. a third of them do, yeah. right? And so I would guess... It's going to have to have a motorized pack that's kind of mounted on the front of the window. The window itself, rather than being fixed, is going to have to be probably an awning window, so it'll hinge at the top and swing up. Um, so the window itself is going to go up by a hundred bucks, something like that, each hundred fifty bucks. Well, what's wouldn't the base cost of gonna, each window? Each window, a clear story window like this, probably four or five hundred dollars, don't you think? Mm -hmm. for a, so it's a twenty-five percent <coughs> increase. Something like that. So it's twenty five percent times thirty. Three percent. The window, and then you're going to yeah. have to mount the motor on it. That's I, I a couple just, hundred bucks, and then you right. got to wire it, and then you right. got to right. yeah. exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And just I think if it's a matter of ventilation, it's not like you're sitting by the window. It's not like you can ever feel, you know, any direct benefit. It maybe it cools the room a little bit, maybe it doesn't. But I mean, it, it would seem to make more sense that it's it needed. stack effect is what you're yeah. talking right. about, right? So yeah. it would draw yeah. draw mm -hmm. air in like a flu, right? Okay. It's going to draw mm -hmm. air in from the lower windows and vent it out on the upper windows. But, but is there another means, mechanical way to do that that doesn't involve well, windows? Like a, uh, just like a yes, actually, we asked my mechanical engineer. He would say, please don't ever open the window. Yeah, <laughs> because his system is going to work the best when the windows are closed. Mm -hmm. So this would be if your system is off. You wouldn't want you to, and, and so you'd have to shut your system off in order to do this. Mm -hmm. um, and you would want to do it on a day that is nice out and not damp, because you wouldn't want to draw damp air into the building and create a humidity problem. Because you know, the next time you close your windows and turn your so system this, on, it's going to. In this climate, I mean, it seems like that would only be. It's going to be in the five days a year. Right, exactly. Yeah. Right, right. Less than yeah. a couple of weeks yeah. in a year, so why bother with something that. that is, right. You don't want to design in <clears throat> trouble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. this is, that's true. Mm -hmm. This is You really need to want to do it in order for this system to work effectively because you, you, you need to you gotta need actively to look it. for those mm -hmm. days right. that you're going to utilize the system that way. When you're mm -hmm. going to shut your system down and say, today's going to be one of those days, I'm going to save. But I'll price it. My, sure. Yeah, sure. my guess and kind of sure. thinking about that number of windows and the power is probably 25, 30 grand. It's mm -hmm. like kind of my ballpark. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. better places put to that in the flooring. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. 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 Great. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, yeah. everyone. Thank you. Uh, Phil, uh, between now and the next two weeks, could you send me? Uh, like the, just the front end of the, of the file bids, mostly the MEP sections, um, just so I can look at the wording, like the scope of work for uh, um, maybe Division 1500 on the front end for the GC and then the front ends for the MEPs, just so we can coordinate things like, you know, fire safing or core drilling or, you know, staging and all those things where there's overlap. Yep. So that the MEPs all all sound the same. So the electrical matches, the plumbing matches, the mechanical, and then the GC. There's no overlap or gaps or something like that. Yep. Thank you. And is town council going to want to look at the contractual stuff on the front end of the specification? Did Molly? they do that for the senior center? Do we know? I, Maybe we should have asked while the senior center represents. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm not aware if they did or not. Um, I can find out pretty easily, though. Okay. okay. Often, we can send know. David just a draft of yeah. this is what we're proposing. Okay. That's probably the best thing, just send it to David and yeah. he's planning on um, shooting it out. Yeah. I wasn't copied on anything that went out for the yeah. senior center. I mean, we I met with Philip, Phil Palumbo and David a month ago, just going over miscellaneous items, and I, I don't recall anything specific that David asked for. We coordinated a bunch of our front end stuff with them so that they basically have the same requirements. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if we just got the same yeah. contractors, they wouldn't be 
Yeah. Doing two different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he just mentioned. So this is early January. We need. Uh, we'll need updated wage rates from the town. You know, when we get close to bid. Mm -hmm. um, We'll, we're going to post to the central register. The town will post to combis and, and local, and to the Gazette and so forth. Uh, but we didn't really specifically talk about the Contract. contractual yeah. stuff. And how they bid that on bid docs? Is that what they did? I don't know what they did. Or project mm -hmm. dog? One of those electronic. Yeah, I, I don't think it was project dog. It might have been bid, bid docs. docs. We assume we'll do the same thing. Yeah. Hey, work for them. It, well, yep. it used to be 20 yep. years ago <laughs> when Phil was doing this all by hand. And you had 10 general contractors bidding and 40 filed sub bidders. All those hard copies, all those drawings came out of the town hall. So the town hall would have 100 sets of yeah. drawings and blueprints and have to mm -hmm. hand them out. And then addendums would be issued, and it was a, it was oh, a mess. Yes. Now it's all done electronic yeah, trading. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They'd be sending out 60 of them. You know, they go to the post office with a big yeah. box and you wait for 20 minutes to yeah. get to the front, and the guy would say, Big line. I can't do sixty of those things. Yeah. I'll take five and then get back in line. Uh, I have sixty of them. Yeah. Well. Everybody else ain't gonna wait for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm glad we don't do that anymore. Yeah, that's definitely it. Awesome. Anything else? Go. All right. So I'll confirm or deny mm -hmm. this meeting on the twelfth. Yeah. Okay. But, okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All right. Anyone opposed? Better not speak. <laughs>